Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial we're diving into the exciting world of text animations in After Effects. Let's start with our first example and as with all of these we're just going to start with a simple text layer. So I have the word motion here and I'm going to start by dropping this down so we can see our text and next to animate I'm going to click this button and I'm going to start with tracking. So I'm going to click on that and our tracking amount we're just going to bring down so all our letters are roughly centered in our composition so for me it's around here so I'm just going to make that minus 125 just so it's a nice round number and then in our range selector I'm going to drop that down and drop down advanced and rather than our shape being square we're going to change this to ramp up the first thing you'll notice is that our letters are no longer centered and that is because with the wrap up we're going to use the offset and we need to bring this back down to minus 100. Then I'm going to bring our playhead to the very start of our animation and just make a keyframe on that offset at minus 100. And then I'm going to go forwards roughly a second and then bring that up to plus 100. So if I scrub through this you'll see that our letters track out so we can see it from here all the way to where they're at their finishing point. We don't want to see our letters at the very start. So next to our animator one, if we click on the button next to add, rather than the one next to animate just above, go to property and then opacity. And that'll make sure it adds it to our current animator one rather than adding an additional animator. And then with this opacity, let's drop that down to zero. So now if I scrub through, you will see that not only do our letters track out, but the opacity also animates our letters on as well. So now I'm just going to play with our ease high and ease low and our ease high I'm going to leave at zero but our ease low I'm going to bring up to 100 just so it has a bit of easing and then I'm also going to highlight both our keyframes. Right click keyframe assistant easy ease and then I'm just going to go to our graph editor. I'm just going to make it ease in at the end a bit more so the graph looks slightly like this. So it's got a bit of ease at the start, but then lots at the end. And that might actually be a bit too much. So I'm just going to bring that back to about there. A little bit less. Yeah, and I think that will work quite nicely. So I'm going to turn off our graph editor. I'm just going to add one more property to our animator one. So again, click the button next to add, and we're going to add blur. And I'm just going to unlink these two properties so we can just edit the first one and make that 500. So now just on our X axis, we will have a blur as these animate on. And let's move on to our example two. So let's go down to our text and click on the button next to animate. And this time let's add position. And we're just going to change our Y position to about minus 300 just so it starts up here towards the top of our composition and straight away I'm just going to click add and let's also add opacity and drop that down to zero just so that starts off again and then drop down our range selector and advanced change it from square to ramp up again and we want our ease high to be minus 50 and then our ease low to be plus 50 let's just bring our playhead to the very start and again create a keyframe for offset we want this to be at minus 100 go forwards roughly a second and then let's make that plus 100 then let's just play that through i want that to happen a bit sooner so i'm just going to drag in our second keyframe just so it's a bit a bit shorter happens a bit quicker and that's much better so we want to add a second animator so what i'm going to do is make sure animator one or anything in here isn't selected so i'm just going to click on our text layer and then i'm going to click the button next to animate and then select opacity and this will add a second animator and i'm going to change that opacity to zero i'm going to open up our range selector and just change the start to 50. And all that's going to do is make sure that half of our letters, 50% of our letters are visible and the other half are not. And we don't want these to be just the first three. We want this to be a random three letters. So I'm going to go to advanced and at the very bottom, you will see randomize order. So I'm just going to turn that from off to on. And now we have three random letters in our word turned on. 
If you're not happy with these three letters, you can change the random seed and keep changing this until you get a combination you're happy with. I was quite happy with what we had at the start, so I'm going to leave it at zero. So what we want to do now is just close that all up so we can just see our text layer, make sure it's selected and duplicate. So now we have two of the identical same animation happening. I'm going to open up this second one, go to our animator two, drop this down, range selector and advanced. And let's change this mode from add to subtract. So that's just going to be the opposite of what the other one was. Rather than add the letters, it's going to subtract them. So we make sure that we're filling in those gaps that we have missing from that first text layer. And also in this second text layer, I'm just going to close our animator 2 and open our animator 1. And we want to find that position that we added. And rather than minus 300, we're just going to make that a positive 300. And now if I go to start, you will see that those other three letters in our second layer come from the bottom and the others from the top. So we have an animation that looks like this. And you might be happy with that. That might be exactly what you're looking for. But what we're going to do is, I'm just going to turn off one of our layers so we can look at one. We're going to open this up again and we're going to add a third animator. So with our text layer selected, next to animate, click this button and let's again find tracking. Okay, let's just ramp up our tracking. and Let's make that 80 and you don't always need to use our start end and offset to animate our properties so this time we're going to keyframe our tracking amount so we're going to create a keyframe bring that to roughly here where our letters are just about to finish move forward and then let's make that zero so if, if i was to play this through you'll see our letters come in and then get sucked in or the tracking gets brought right in tight and we're just going to highlight both of these keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease and then let's just go back to our graph editor and make this movement really snappy so it happens quite quick at the start and then eases in let's just see how that looks it's not too bad but i want that to be quite a bit quicker so i'm just going to bring that second keyframe in a bit tighter comes in Okay, I might adjust that again in a second, but what I'm going to do is highlight or click on this animator free, copy, and then let's turn on our second text layer and let's just make sure our playhead is on the position of that first keyframe because this is where it will paste the keyframes. Click on our second text layer and paste. So now if I open this up, we should have that animator free with the same tracking keyframes added. So now if I play this through with both layers turned on, we have our movement from the top and bottom and then our tracking in just afterwards. And then you might have noticed in the example, we have a generic sort of like pull back and snap backwards as well. So to do that, I'm just going to create a null or add a null and then highlight both our text layers and just pick whip to that null. And then let's just press S on our null so we can see the scale and then let's Let's highlight our two text layers and press U on our keyboard so we can see our keyframes. Let's go to where our tracking keyframe starts and create a scale keyframe. And then let's go to that second keyframe of our tracking and then let's scale back to roughly 80%. And then what we're going to do is just match our easing that we have on the tracking, which was roughly, I think, Looked a bit like that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe that will come in a bit less. And then what I'm also going to do is add a completely separate null, so a new null. I'm going to create a keyframe at the start at 100, and then at the very end, let's make that 80, and then let's pick whip our original null to that new null. So now there's a generic pullback while that snapping all occurs as well. So it's going to start here and come back like so. There might even be too much. So I'm going to make that second keyframe 90. I'm even going to press U and on our tracking keyframes and that scale keyframe. I'm just going to bring it in just so it happens a bit sooner or starts to happen a bit sooner while that up and down motion is still happening. See how that affects it. And I think that's looking a bit nicer, so I'm going to leave it there and let's move on to example number three.
And example number three is a reasonably simple position keyframe on the on the Y, but it's got a nice bounce and a bit of rhythm and a bit of oscillation to it. So it's a bit of a natural movement, like it's going up and then coming down and sort of settling into its final position. And to do this, we obviously need to add a position to our text. So we're going to click the same button we've been using so far and add position. And we're just going to move our Y position down. So it's kind of roughly beneath where our word started. I'm just going to make that, let's say 150 for now and then drop down our range selector and advanced, change our shape from square to ramp up. And let's change both our ease high and ease low to 50. And then at the very start of our animation or our composition, let's do a keyframe on offset, minus 100. And then let's move forward to not quite a second, so I'm going to go 16 frames and then make a keyframe with that at 100. And just playing that through, you'll see our word comes up from beneath into its position. So we do also, don't forget to add in an opacity. Let's make that zero just so it's off at the very start. And now we have something that looks like this. What we're going to do is let's just collapse our animator one. And with that animator one selected, we're just going to duplicate. So we have a copy called animator two Let's drop this down and the first thing we're going to do is delete our opacity property because we do not want that. And then let's change our position to let's say minus 50. We can always change this in the future. And then I'm going to press U on our keyboard so we can see all four of our keyframes. And I'm going to select our second pair and then bring it slightly forward in our timeline. So roughly, I think that's what, one, two, three, four. Let's go for five frames. And there you go. So if I just play that through, you will see that it does go up past its point and then back down. So I'm also just going to grab that final keyframe in our animator two and bring it out more. So it has a bit more time to come into that position. And then tighten up these first two. And I think that's looking okay. But what we're going to do is, I'm just going to close and open it again so I can see our animator one and two. I'm going to duplicate again our animator two and then open that up. And then let's change our position from minus 50 to 20. And then I'm going to press U again on the keyboard and just move that pair of keyframes forward. And now it should go up, back down, and then finally back up again. Yep, and then again, I'm just going to play with our keyframes until I have a bit of movement that I'm happy with. And there we go. And let's move on to example number four. It's kind of similar to example three in the steps we're going to make to create the movement, but I just wanted to create an example where we're using three D layers. So we're going to open up our text layer click the button next to animate. And at the very top, we can click enable per character 3D. So now when I click the button next to animate, we have all the same properties, but if for example, the one we want is rotation, so let's just select rotation. Now we have three rotations rather than just that standard one that we had before. So now we can rotate in the 3D space as well. And the one we are going to use is I think the X. Yep, that's the one, so let's, before we do that, you can, as you can see, they're all rotating from the very bottom of the letter, which might be what you want. But for this example, we want them to rotate from the top. So to change this, we need to go to our more options, which is above our animator one and our grouping alignment. And we want this second one, which is on the Y. And if I just click this button so you can see where these are and just zoom in, you'll see, or hopefully you can see these small crosses at the bottom of each letter. You might see it better if I move them. There you go. So as I move that number, these move with it. And we want these to be at the very top of our letters. So let's go roughly there. It doesn't have to be exact. So for me, that's minus 91. Let's just leave that there. And now if I change our X rotation, they will rotate from that cross. So let's have our X rotation 
at 90. So swinging forwards, as you'll see, you can see them, but we're gonna sort that out in a second. So let's leave it at 90. And again, let's go to our range selector and advanced, change from square to ramp up. Ease high, we can leave as it is, and then ease low, let's make that 100. And then let's go to the very start of our timeline and create a keyframe on offset, making sure that's at minus 100. And let's go forwards and create another keyframe at 100. So now they'll just simply swing down as you see like that. And rather than add an opacity to this animator one, what we're going to do is again, make sure it's not selected. So just click on our text layer, the name of our layer here, go to animate and opacity. So it's added into a second animator, change that to zero, drop down our range selector and advanced and let's leave it on square, but our ease high, let's drop that down to minus 100 and our ease low up to positive 100 or plus 100. And then let's make a keyframe on the start. And then let's move forward slightly in our timeline to roughly here, where you can see our final letter start to drop down and make that 100. And just so you know, if we had added our opacity to our animator one, you would get more of a fade as they're dropping down. It would be at sort of 50% opacity. And then only when that letter hits its final position, would that opacity have changed to 100. So you get a sort of fade as they drop rather than what we want is an instant on as they drop as if they're sort of dropping from out of view into view instantly. So that's why we've done it as a separate animator. So we have more control. Might even move our second keyframe out slightly because I, in my opinion, we were seeing those a bit too soon. Now let's drop it to there. So I have that on eight frames. Let's leave that there. Let's collapse our two animators. And then our animator two, let's just press enter with it selected so we can change the name. Let's just call that opacity just so there's no confusion. And then let's bring that above our animator one. The order doesn't matter, but we're going to duplicate our animator one. And I kind of want to keep these all together just so I can see exactly what's happening. And next, what we're going to do is highlight our animator one and duplicate. I'm gonna open this up and change our X rotation to minus 50 and then go to our range selector one advanced and change our mode from add to subtract then while we're here also change our ease height to 50 and our ease low also to 50 and then close those down and if i scrub through you can see it swings in as it did before but now it goes past where we want it to finish so it's going to go past and then we're going to again duplicate our animator two and we're going to have it come back to its resting place. So we have our animator three, which is just a duplicate of our animator two. And our X rotation, we want to be 50, which counteracts that minus 50 we had in our animator two. So now it will, because all our keyframes are on top of each other at the moment, nothing will look like it's happened. But if I press U on the keyboard, I can highlight all of our keyframes and just offset them by about three or four frames. So our first pair of keyframes on our animator one, three frames later, our animator two, and then so on. So now it should come in, swing past where it wants to finish, and then back into its final position. I am actually going to add one more animator. So I'm going to select our animator three and duplicate one last time. And now we are going to unfortunately have to go back through and just change our rotation slightly. So I'm going to start by just pressing U and bring in these keyframes forwards, three frames. And then let's close that and open it again so we can see all our properties. And let's collapse animator one, two, and three so we can see our fourth animator. Go to the end where our animation finishes. And we want our X rotation on this final one to be zero, I think. So it comes in, past, and then our animator three actually. So if I turn off our animator four, our animator three at the moment finishes where we want our animator four to finish. We actually want it to swing backwards slightly. So our X rotation, let's change that from 50 to let's say 70, just so it swings back slightly a bit less than it did swing forward as if it's losing momentum 
and now we can turn back on our animator 4 and we will now have to counteract that in our animator 4 so let's go back to our X rotation in our animator 4 and let's make that minus 20 just to counteract that 20 that we added to our animator 3 and now if we play that through you will see it's got that extra bit of movement in its swing in its rotation and that's example four all done so let's move on to our final example my favorite example number five and this example sort of moves in from the left and it sort of changes from a red italic font to our final white bold font so let's start by adjusting our font so it looks like that initial red italic font so what i'm going to do is with it selected i'm just going to change the color to a red and then I'm going to change it from what I have as a, a black weight to an italic weight and it's a thinner weight as well so I'm happy with that so now we're going to drop this down click the button next to animate and let's select opacity and then let's turn our opacity to zero and open up our range selector go to advanced and let's change our ease high to minus 100 then our ease low to 100 so that's going to be quite a harsh, not much of a fade between as these are turned on. So it's going to be sort of either on or off, essentially, I guess. And then at the very start of our timeline, let's make a keyframe for start. Move forward to wherever we want. I'm going to go with 20 frames, so just short of a second. And change that to 100. So as you can see, it goes letter by letter, animating on from left to right. And then let's collapse our animator 1 and select it and then duplicate open up our animator 2 and then let's open up our range selector as well and all we're going to do is let's select our two keyframes for start and shift these forwards a few frames so I've gone for three and then not make a keyframe but let's just change our end to 0% so now if I scrub through you'll see our letters animate on and then slowly behind where we have our second set of keyframes they animate off. So depending on how long you want to see these letters for, we can shift these. So I'm going to move them slightly further in our timeline so that we see a few more letters for a bit longer. So something like that I'm quite happy with. And then I'm actually going to turn off our animator 1 and 2 for now just by clicking the little eye symbol on the left and then click on the layer itself. And then next to animate, let's also add in tracking making sure it's a separate animator free and our tracking amount we're going to make 150 so that's nice and wide you might want that a bit smaller if your word is a bit longer than mine but we kind of want it to fill our composition so it's nice and wide and let's go to the start of our composition and let's go to our range selector make a keyframe for start and let's go forwards to roughly where our final keyframe is and make another keyframe with our start at 100 so you'll see it go from nice and tracked out all the way to in as you can see like so and then I'm going to press U on the keyboard and on our tracking keyframes I'm going to right click on the last one easy ease in right click on the first one and easy ease out and then let's just go back to our animator one and two and turn these on let's just play that through I think I'm also going to add some ease in on the other keyframes so I'm going to press U let's just right click on the two other final keyframes and let's do an ease in and the same on the ease outs at the start so it adds an ease out on the first two keyframes and we want this to be quite snappy it's not too bad at the moment but I'm going to highlight all of our final three keyframes go to our graph editor and let's just bring this in so it's looking a bit more snappy in the middle and let's highlight the first three and then do the same just bring it in so we get a nice peak in the middle let's just see if that's a bit nicer yeah I think that's looking quite nice we can and probably will adjust this in a second when we see our second text layer so let's just jump ahead and do that now so let's so let's select our text layer and duplicate and let's just solo this layer for now and to start with we're just going to move our playhead just so we can see our font and then we're just going to change it back to our final color and weight so I'm going to make that white again and change it back to what I had which was a black weight and now we have the same animation but with our final font and we want the same animation 
but we want it to not turn off afterwards. So let's open up our text layer so we can see our three animators. And then what we're going to do now is delete our animator one. And then in our animator two, we're just going to change the end from 0% to 100%. And now if I play this through, you will see that we get a flash of our red italic font followed by our final font. And we are getting a bit of an overlap here. So I'm just going to have a quick play. And I think if we were to go to our animator two and advanced and just change our smoothness from 100 to zero, and then do the same on our first text layer on also our animator two, go to advance and let's change that to zero. That should hopefully, yeah, there you go. So all I've done is just change the smoothness on our animator two on both of our text layers to zero and that has stopped that overlap. So now if I play this through, we get a bit more what we're after. I'm just going to press U and again, highlight all our keyframes and just play with our ease in a bit more. I might even bring those in slightly just to make it a bit snappier. And that is our final example all finished. So thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more After Effects tips and tricks. See you in the next video.